Hey, what is up, mortals? It is TC Crew here with a new video for you. Welcome to part three of What If Quirks Were Outlawed. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So we begin. I'm also glad we're doing this series again. What are you doing here? Get out of here. You wish to sacrifice yourself for a pretty criminal? Bakugo and Midoriya were shocked, for they didn't expect to see this. In front of them was none other than Stain, pushing back the flaming figure that was Endeavor. The two boys were still unsure of what to do, until the crimson-clad vigilante walked up to them. What are you doing here? Get out of here! Stain shouted, sounding more aggressive than he used to. Midoriya jumped upon hearing this, but he quickly recovered as he said, I'm not leaving without him! With a relatively calm voice, Stain got annoyed as he tightened the grip he had around his sword. You wish to sacrifice yourself for a petty criminal? The crimson vigilante growled, letting his anger grow more and more by the second. Midoriya was startled by Stain's sudden burst of anger, but he didn't let show as he answered. That petty criminal is nothing more than a broken and forsaken child. If we don't help him, we don't deserve to call ourselves here. With the same voice as before, but he, he didn't get to finish before Stain interrupted him. I've already told you, I'm not a hero. Stain shouted with more anger. Midoriya was silent for a while, as his gaze slowly made his way to the ground. Thinking that he had won the argument, Stain turned his back on the two boys, trying to focus his attention on Endeavor. Human! A voice then said, slightly trembling as it did. Stain turned his gaze back to the two boys, only to see that Midoriya was looking straight at him with a cold gaze. I was going to say human! The green-haired boy finished, his voice still trembling. These words took Stain by surprise, for it was unexpected. The desire to help anyone, regardless of who they are, is a trait reserved for heroes. Midoriya's statement claimed everyone wanted to help others, and Stain couldn't get over the truth behind those words. The crimson-clad vigilante gritted his teeth as he turned his attention back to the almost recovered endeavor. I'll hold him off. Grab the kid and get out of here. Stain then grunted before he leapt into battle. Both Midoriya and Bakugo were surprised to hear those words come out of Stain's mouth, but they quickly shrugged it off before they began to move. You better know what you're doing, Bakugo said to his green-haired friend as they made their way past Endeavor. Midoriya didn't budge upon hearing this as he quickly answered, I hope so, with a trembling voice. The two boys then managed to sneak by the flaming giant that was Endeavor, but it didn't go unnoticed. The flaming agent saw them run past him, but he was too distracted by Stain to do anything about it. The two vigilantes swiftly made their way over to the beaten boy, carefully observing him as they did. He was unconscious, his black hair was singed and covered in blood, and a part of his face was now burnt. Bedoria felt a hint of anger enter his body like venom, and the cause of that anger was the AQTF agent that had done this. The green-haired boy looked over to his blonde companion before they both nodded and proceeded to pick up the wounded teen. His body was limp and heavy, but fortunately he was still alive. Let's move! Bakugo growled as he looked at the green-haired companion. Midori gave his partner a neutral look before he nodded in response. The two then proceeded to slowly and carefully move away from the scene in an attempt to not draw any unnecessary attention from Endeavor. The two were just about to leave, but were abruptly stopped. The second that they took a step, they could hear the sound of a loud bang, followed by a sound of fire. The duo turned their expressions towards the source of the sound, only to be horrified. What they saw was a crimson-clad man with burns and bruises lying on the ground, and he was in bad shape. What happened next only served to horrify the teens even more. Approaching the injured vigilante was none other than the flaming titan himself, Endeavor, and he looked to be in bad shape. He was limping as he moved, had numerous bleeding cuts, and he looked like he was on the verge of collapsing. Endeavor looked furious as he charged towards Stain and a jet of flame, intent on ending it now. Midoriya didn't even think. He just let go of the broken teen before he rushed ahead. The green-haired boy delivered a punch to the face of the flaming giant, drawing blood from his nose. Midoriya stood guard in front of Stain as Endeavor recovered with more rage than before. He then charged once again, only to get blasted by the chest by an explosion. Gonna give me a heads up the next time you plan on running face first into danger? Bakugo shouted, prompting Midoriya to look at his blonde companion. Bakugo grunted loudly before he spoke up. Looks like we're not living without a fight. 
So how do we beat a guy that is a giant when compared to us? The blonde asked, sounding more calm than before. Bakugou's words made Midoriya focus, for he noticed something odd about Endeavor's approach. He only charged straight ahead, even after being hit and stopped whenever he did. It was as if he didn't know any other way of moving, but why was that the case? Midori's eyes went wide when he finally realized the answer. It wasn't that Endeavor didn't know any better. His physicality couldn't do any other way. The flame giant's frame was one of the things that made him formidable, so but now it's become a liability. The alleyway they were standing in was cramped. As such, it limits his mobility. Midori and Bakugo were much smaller in comparison, and right now it became their greatest strength. Not only that, but Endeavor didn't look to be in his best condition. That's his weakness. He's too big. Dalloway is so cramped that he can only move forward and backwards, whereas we are small enough to be able to move almost freely. It's also like he could collapse at any moment, so we probably have the advantage right now. The green-haired boy said with uncertainty as he took a stance. Bakugo looked surprised upon hearing this, only as he looked and realized that it was true. Endeavor didn't have much mobility right now, unlike he and Midoriya. The blonde grinned widely upon this realization as he too took a stance before saying, Let's kick his ass! With a confident voice, Endeavor finally recovered from his staggered state as he began to flare up and charge at the teens. He prepared a flaming fist, readying himself to cremate the vigilantes, but was hit by another explosion instead. The giant staggered back once more and received another punch from Midoriya, which was followed by another explosion. Midoriya and Bakuko continued with this strategy for a long while, whittling Endeavor down little by little. The flaming agent knew what would happen if he let this continue, and he refused to go down. Out of nowhere a burst of flame erupted from Endeavor, knocking both Bakugo and Midoriya back. After that he charged at them both, bearing the full intent to kill them. Midoriya was the first to act, as he got back up and faced Endeavor. The green-haired boy had acted out of instinct, and every movement made had been subconscious. The raging Endeavor closed in on him, and Midoriya responded by throwing a powerful kick straight into the jaw of the flaming opponent. All of the force from his charge had been added to the kick and it caused Endeavor to fall backwards with a disgusting sound of bones breaking. During this time, Bakugo got up and fired one final explosion towards Endeavor, making him crash hard into the ground. The duo panted heavily as they stared at the now unconscious Endeavor. Bakugo then looked at Midoriya before saying, I'm not following you on any more suicide missions. With a slightly annoyed tone before continuing to pant, the green-haired boy shrugged off his partner's comment as he went to see if Stain was okay. Bakugo noticed Midori's intention and proceeded to follow his lead. The two made it over to Stain and slowly sat him up before Midoriya spoke. Are you okay? With a worried tone, Stain shivered slightly upon hearing this before he coughed loudly and responded. What are you doing here? The crimson-clad vigilante asked, voice being weighed down by pain and injury. Midoriya was a little more concerned, but he remained calm as he answered. We faced a burning obstacle on the way. Stain was confused upon hearing this, only as he strained his eyes and looked more carefully. Now he was suddenly shocked and taken by surprise, for he could clearly see the unconscious body of Endeavor lying in front of him. You... did you? Stain uttered, but didn't finish his sentence. Like he said, we faced a burning obstacle and overcame it. Bakugo then said as if he was answering the man. Stain was still in shock, but he quickly breathed a sigh of relief before trying to stand up. Bakugo and Midoriya noticed this effort and helped him up. After Stain was back on his feet, Midoriya shifted his gaze over to the still unconscious teen he had tried to save. He was injured, and he definitely needed help. Can you help Stain? I'll carry that one. Midoriya said to Bakugo while pointing his thumb to the unconscious individual. The blonde grunted at first, but he still nodded as a response. Midoriya left Stain to Bakugo before proceeding to carry the heavy and limp body of the injured teen. The group then slowly made their way out of the alley, carefully walking to avoid attention. Upon returning with Stain and the injured teen, Midoriya and Bakugo were immediately helped by Toshinori and Aizawa. They were both relieved to see their companions alive and well, but that quickly changed when Aizawa's gaze landed on the injured teen that they had dragged with them. Who is that? The tired man asked, sounding a little annoyed. Midoriya looked a little scared at first, before he calmed himself and answered, with a somewhat calm voice. He was getting beaten half to death by Endeavor, and he needed help. With a somewhat calm voice, Aizawa was still annoyed as he then commented, 
So you brought a stranger to our secret hideout. Midoriya froze upon hearing these words, for what he had done could have been bad. This stranger that he had dragged with him could potentially sell them out, and it would be his fault if that happened. The green-haired boy calmed himself a little. After realizing this was no different from what Toshinori had done to him and Bakugo, I only did the same as Toshinori, Midoriya then said, calming himself down as he did. Toshinori felt proud upon hearing this, that the kid he saved went on to return the favor by saving someone else. But this joy was quickly drowned out by the extremely angry glare of Aizawa. All right, what about Endeavor? Toshinori then asked, trying to change the topic. Midori and Bakugo looked at each other, but they didn't get to answer before Stain spoke up. They beat him up. By the looks of it, he was unconscious with a broken jaw. The crimson-glad vigilante said, sounding much calmer than he usually was. Both Aizawa and Toshinori were shocked to hear this. Not only did the teens manage to defeat Endeavor, but the way Stain had said it was like he was complimenting them for the first time. Everyone looked at Stain with a weird look, until he returned to his usual demeanor by asking, What do we do about him? While looking at the unconscious teen, everyone returned to their usual selves as they looked at the boy. Let's cure his injuries first, then we'll talk when he wakes up. Toshinori then said, sounding calm. Everyone looked at the blond man with neutral expressions before they all nodded in perfect unison. Some time passed and the vigilantes all helped to cure the injuries of both Stain and the boy. After that, Toshinori along with Midori and Bakugo took the boy to a separate room so that they could speak when he woke up. Stain and Aizawa weren't with them, for they didn't want to talk with the kid. The trio all sat next to the boy and patiently waited for him to wake up, and it was a long wait. He sure is taking his sweet time to wake up, Bakugo exclaimed, sounding quite annoyed. Midoriya briefly glanced at his blonde friend, and he responded by saying, He was beaten half to death. What do you expect from him? With a voice that hinted on nervousness as he was trying to enlighten Bakugo on the circumstances, Bakugo grunted in response to this, for he knew that his green-haired friend was right. You did have more patience, young Bakugo. Toshinori then said, his voice proud and booming as usual. Bakugo didn't respond once again, for right as Toshinori finished his statement, they could hear a pain groan coming from the boy. The trio all turned their attention towards the boy and watched as he slowly regained his awareness. Where the hell am I? The boy exclaimed as he quickly looked at his surroundings. Toshinori was the first to act as he stood up and said, Calm down, you're somewhere safe. With a reassuring voice, the boy turned his gaze towards the trio before he began to panic and shout, Who are you? Are you with the AQTF? Quite aggressively, both Midori and Bakugo were caught off guard by the boy's sudden burst of anger, but they really shouldn't have been. The last thing that the boy probably remembered was being beaten senseless by an AQTF officer. It makes sense for him to turn on the defensive side. No, we're the opposite in fact. I'm Toshinori, these two are Izuka Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugo. They actually saved you from the AQTF officer that nearly killed you. Toshinori then said, explaining the situation and introducing the trio in one go. The boy calmed down a little as he slowed down his breathing. So you're vigilantes? The boy then asked, sounding like he was genuinely surprised. Toshinori just smiled at this reaction as he answered, And there we are! With a joyous tone, the boy was wide-eyed upon hearing this, for it had been unexpected. He knew of the existence of vigilantes, but this is the first time that he had ever encountered one. Toshinori was quite joyful when seeing this boy's reaction, but he changed his manner as he cleared his throat before asking, Young man, what is your name? With a calm voice, the boy looked at Toshinori quite conflicted, as if he didn't want to share his name before he fought against it and answered, It's Ejiro Kirishima. With a conflicted voice, Toshinori kept his previous demeanor as he continued to speak. Well, young Kirishima, can you tell us what you were doing out there? The blonde man asked, trying to remain as calm as possible. Kirishima looked away for a second, trying to avoid the question, but the more he avoided it, the more he realized that he couldn't run away from it. I was with a group of friends. We went there for supplies. The boy answered, clearly showing that he didn't like talking about it. Toshinori was about to ask another question, but was caught off by the slightly aggressive tone of Bakugo. What will you need supplies for? The blonde asked, sounding like he was attacking Kurishima. The black-haired boy didn't take this lightly as he responded. We live on the street and I have absolutely nothing. Why do you think we need supplies? Kurishima said angrily, as if he was severely offended by Bakugo's statement. Bakugo looked away with a p 
passive-aggressive expression as the room fell silent. No one knew what to say, for it was clear that Bakugo had killed Kurishima's desire to speak. The silence remained for an unbearable amount of time, until Kurishima moved to stand up. Toshinori looked at the injured boy with concern as he asked, What are you doing? With a voice that clearly showed his concern, Kurishima remained aggressive as he answered, I'm leaving, I need to find my friends. Before standing up and balancing himself on one of the walls, Toshinori was even more concerned now as he said, I wouldn't recommend that. You haven't fully recovered, you! But was cut off by Kurishima, who shouted, I'm leaving! In pure annoyance, Toshinori was distraught as he realized that Kurishima had had enough of them. The exit is over there! The blonde man then said, sounding de defeated as he pointed to the door that was across the room. Kurishima didn't hesitate for a second as he walked his way to the exit. The trio of vigilantes were all still and silent, but for different reasons. Midori hadn't said a single word during this entire event, for he had been carefully listening to everything that Kurishima had said. There was something in his words that intrigued him, and he decided to act on said intuition. The green-haired boy got up from his seat before jogging to catch up with Kurishima. The black-haired boy could clearly notice the presence of Midoriya, but he paid it no attention. How are you going to find your friends? Midori asked with a hint of concern, not wanting to make the other teen any angrier. Kurishima didn't look at Midoriya as he answered, I know where to look. Without stopping, the green-haired boy expected an answer that was similar to this, so he asked a follow-up question. And if they're not there? The green-haired boy asked. Kurishima didn't change his manner as he quickly answered, Then I'll keep looking. A part of Midori was happy to hear this, for it meant that Kurishima would stop at nothing to find his friends. What concerned him is what came next. Would they continue a life of crime on the street and eventually be caught? Or would they change their ways? The two then reached the door when they abruptly stopped. Kurishima grabbed onto the doorknob, but he didn't open it when he heard what Midoriya said. Why don't you join us? Like you said, you have nothing. And if you're with us, you can fight and make a difference. The green-haired boy said, voice sounding as calm as he could manage. Kurishima couldn't take these words seriously at first, for it sounded too much like a joke in his ears. But when he turned to see Midori's eyes, he realized that it wasn't a joke. The green-haired boy was being dead serious. He was inviting Kurishima to their band of illegal crime fighters, and he didn't even show a single hint of hesitation. Kurishima didn't know how to react to this, for Midori was an alien to him. His conviction and dedication was something that he had never encountered before, and he dared to say that it was contagious. The teen clenched his fist in conflict, for he, the thing he wanted to do, didn't align with what he needed to do. I need to find my friends, Kurishima then said, before turning back to the door. Midori had hoped for another answer, but he was still happy with what he got. The black-haired teen hadn't answered his question, which made him believe that he was considering it. All right, just do us a favor and keep this place a secret. The green-haired boy then said, sounding just as calm as before. Kurishima looked at him once more and said, Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. It's the least I can do for you. Before leaving through the door, Midori smiled upon hearing this. He had no concrete proof that Kurishima would keep his promise, but at the same time, he had no reason to believe that he would sell them out. The green-haired boy proceeded to walk his way away from the door, realizing that both Bakugo and Toshinori had already joined Aizawa and Stain in the other room. Meanwhile, in another location, far away from the vigilante's hideout, was an unordinary man. This man was going through the reports of the most recent events, and it served to both shock and confuse him. The report mentioned that a fellow officer of the AQTF, codenamed Endeavor, had been defeated and injured. That alone was intriguing, but what served to shock the man was the description of the suspects. They were teenagers, mere teenagers. The fact that someone so young managed to overpower and defeat Endeavor was hard to believe, even when considering the fact that he was outnumbered. Just what are you really? The man asked himself, as he actively tried to figure out who these young and mysterious vigilantes were. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in the story thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes deep into the facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your womb knowledge for all kinds of series, guaranteed. On top of that, we got a third channel called We the Celestial Naruto What Ifs. It's what we do on this channel already, but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, 
then I would like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being, we only accept members 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. Our discord is an all around fantastic place to be. Whether you're a fan or looking to join our band of misfits, we're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching, and have a great day.